So if you spend a lot of time around the DVD community, I'm sure you've probably heard a lot of the complaints about the balance of the game. A lot of killers think that the gen speeds are way too fast and they get done way too quickly. Meanwhile, you hear a lot of survivors complaining about the lack of pallets and the lack of resources to use against killers. I'm going to take this video and use it as a way to talk about my own feelings about the balance of the game, what I think should be changed, what shouldn't be changed, and why. Before I get into any of this, I want to preface this by saying that honestly, I really don't think Dead by Daylight is that unbalanced of a game. I think given its 1v4 asymmetrical nature, I think it's very difficult to balance correctly. And this might also have a lot to do with the fact that I played the game back a long time ago whenever the balance was way, way worse than it is now. So I've seen the game at its absolute worst, and I've also watched it grow into what it is today. Now, anybody that plays Killer often has probably dealt with the games where you get quote-unquote gen rushed, which I really don't like that as a term because it's really just doing the objective efficiently. But for the sake of this video, we'll use it anyway. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about the games of Killer where the survivors split up and they do gens all across the map. And no matter how quickly you chase and down people, you can't really get enough pressure across the map fast enough to stop them from doing gens because they're just all over the place, constantly working on them at all times. And you feel ridiculously helpless as a killer, which definitely sucks because it's a 1v4 game and you shouldn't feel like you should feel so helpless as the killer. This is the major issue that people have in this game, especially with killer. And I think it's a major problem as well. And I don't think it's even necessarily because of the power roll or anything. I think both sides need to make sure to not have a feeling of helplessness. I think if you're playing an online PVP video game and you feel literally helpless, then there's no point in playing the game. It feels like all purpose of the game is gone if you have no control over the actual match. Now, because of this, a lot of people have suggested raising the amount of time it takes to complete a generator. Now, if you're looking only at these particular games for this opinion, it might seem like a good idea. This definitely could help out those matches with their playtime. But if you look further, you'll notice that if you look at the DVD stats, most games are not like this. A very large majority of games, the killers don't have very much problems getting kills. And as a matter of fact, Survivor can be very, very difficult, especially if you're playing solo queue. If you were to add a massive flat nerf to survivors across the board, that might help those edge case games that make you feel helpless as killer, but they would also make the mass majority of games that are already okay feel even more helpless as survivor, even though they're already struggling to begin with. This is why I'm never a fan of the idea of adding more gen time. I think it's something that would do way more harm than good to the game, because most games would end up just being much worse overall. The next argument I want to talk about is the Survive with Friends argument, where people say that the big issue with the game is Survive with Friends, and that people that play Survive with Friends should be punished in some way, whether it be more generators to do, or more gen speed, or some kind of a debuff. While I don't think this is the worst idea, I do think Survive with Friends is like a major issue that causes survivors to play at a higher level than they would solo. I think relying on this to fix all balance issues is not really a good idea because four solo queue survivors that are good will play on the, at the same level as a survivor with friends. So even if you added something like this, it wouldn't fix the overall issue. You would still run into groups of four survivors that are solo that are just good at the game that would still make you feel like shit, that would still make you feel helpless, and it wouldn't really fix the grand overall problem, and it would just make the game feel worse as a survivor because anytime you want to play with your friends, you would have an uphill battle on your hands. Again, I don't think it's the worst change idea. I wouldn't be completely opposed to it, but I still don't think it fixes the overall issue of the game. And I think that's what needs to be addressed. So how do these issues all get solved in a way that makes it balanced for everybody? Well, I think the answer is in the maps. Ever since the beginning of DVD, this game has always had the problem of having really bad maps. The way they play is really, really unhealthy for the game, and it leads to a lot of the issues that people have. So let's talk about the actual dynamic of how the maps play. So the majority of maps in DBD have a very low amount of pallets, somewhere between 8 to 12. But, however, these pallets are very, very strong. This is where the big disconnect comes in between high-level survivors and low-level survivors and how difficult or easy it is to play against them. Survivors that are very skilled at the game and very good at playing pallets know how to use all these pallets very, very well. So even though there's a small number of them, they will get the very maximum use out of them and they'll still be able to run a killer around easily with the amount of pallets provided. Because these pallets are safe, and you can see from the background footage right now that it's pretty much impossible to catch a survivor at one of these pallets after it's thrown if they know what they're doing and they play it correctly. Because these pallets are safe, you're forced to kick them, which then gives them the time to run to the next pallet, which you're then forced to kick, which gives them the time to run to the next pallet, and so on and so forth, the whole time their teammates are working on generators and getting stuff done, and you have zero map pressure whatsoever. 
This is 100% the reason why these games as Survivor are sometimes so frustrating. It's not how quickly the gens get done overall. It's because you can't actually pressure the generators by downing a Survivor because downing a Survivor is so difficult to do. However, this is only the case in the highest of skilled players, which I think is a very small percentage of the population of the game. A very, very large percentage of the player base does not know all the ins and outs of the game. They don't know the perfect way to play every single pallet, and they make a lot of mistakes. Which means even with these safe pallets, sometimes you can get hits on the not-so-good survivors, or sometimes they won't loop them correctly, and they won't really get good time efficiency out of them. And because of this, it ends up not even being worthwhile to have the low pallet count, because they end up just running out of resources super quickly, and they also don't even get good use out of the pallets to begin with. This is the reason why when the devs show things such as kill rates, the kill rates for killers are usually somewhere around 3 kills average, which is very high, because a large majority of the player base doesn't really know what they're doing, so you can kind of just kill them with ease, but when you do get that small percentage of survivors that do know what they're doing, it's incredibly frustrating. So my proposed fix to this would be to do the opposite, whereas right now there's a low number of pallets that are very high strength, I would love to see a high number of pallets, but the pallets be a lot lower in strength. So what I mean by this is I mean I want the pallet loops to be sized in a way where the killer has a realistic chance of catching the survivor even after the pallet's thrown. That way when you're chasing a survivor and they make it to the pallet, the chase doesn't just end right there, you don't have to just kick the pallet and let them get to the next one, the chase continues to go on, you continue to play the pallet, and the survivor has to continue to outplay you. I think it's very important to note here that the pallets can't be too unsafe. For instance, pallets on maps like Hawkins are way too unsafe to the point where the survivor doesn't really have a realistic chance themselves. I think pallets like these on Batam are the perfect example of pallets where the survivor has a realistic chance of not getting hit and the killer has a realistic chance of getting a hit based on who outplays each other. Pilot like these are more fair for both sides, and they also add a lot more depth to the game, even for the survivor players who normally would just make it to the pallet, wait for the force break, and then run to the next. It adds more depth to the gameplay and adds a higher skill gap for survivors, which is kind of desperately needed in the game right now. I do want to say that if these pallets were implemented more, they would definitely have to consider removing Bloodlust, because Bloodlust kind of ruins this entire theory for maps. The general idea around this map theory is that as a survivor, the correct play would be to continue mind gaming, such as doing things like a fake vault, and then use the distance that you get from the fake vault to make it to the next pallet, which would hopefully be nearby since the pallet count is so high. However, when you add Bloodlust into this mix, it kind of ruins the whole thing, because not only does the fair pallet become unfair because the killer can just run around until he gets Bloodlust, but also as a survivor, you can't even leave the tile to try to get to the next one because the extra speed from Bloodlust allows the killer to catch up to you in the tiny amount of dead space in between tiles. I would even go as far as to say that Bloodlust existing basically removes the possibility of any balance existing on the map ever, because if the survivor ever starts actually outplaying the killer, the killer just gets free speed and gets a hit for free even though he didn't deserve it. Another issue that this brings up whenever there's a low pallet count is the amount of dead zones that spawn on a map. A dead zone is basically a part of the map where there's nothing that you could actually use to like interact with the killer or anyway, no pallets or windows or anything, it's just kind of a part of the map that's just barren and it's just there. In my opinion, these are really bad for the game because it doesn't really leave the survivor with any options at all and it's kind of just boring. It's like if the survivor gets caught out here, they just die with no hope whatsoever, and the killer, there's really no interaction from your side either, there's no having to outplay the survivor, they just die. Areas like this one on Azrael Dressing Place can be pretty insane because this one pallet right here is pretty much the only thing in this entire corner. If you eliminate that one pallet, there's a big ass corner that's four tiles wide where basically nothing is. There's just nothing there that can help you get away from a killer at all. I feel like a higher pallet count would make this a lot better because I feel like these dead zones could be replaced by pretty much anything. Even if you replace it with something that's extremely killer-sided, like a super weak pallet or a super weak window, it would at least give survivors something where they feel like they could maybe try to make a play and outplay, even if the odds are against them, it would still add some interaction between the survivor and the killer, rather than what it is now, which is basically just, if you get caught out there, you're dead, end of discussion. Another thing I would like to see is a lot more creativity in the actual tiles that can spawn. Right now, it feels like when tiles spawn, it's either a single pallet that is pretty safe, or it's no pallet at all. There's really no reason, though, why we couldn't have double pallet spawns, as long as the two pallets were extremely unsafe by themselves. But it would be really interesting to maybe add tiles that had two pallets that were both really weak, but then when used together, they can be safe, but if a killer breaks even one of them, then it becomes much less safe. 
For instance, a place like this on Batam can have pallets in between these trees and the trash and the center blocks, and you can make some interesting tiles here with two pallets that alone would be really, really bad, but because they're in the same tile, you could maybe combo them as a survivor to maybe combine them to become safe. But as a killer, there would still be a lot of play around them before they're thrown, as well as even after they're thrown, you would only have to kick one of them to make the tile unsafe. There's a possibility of adding both the pallets combined to the same little structure, or you can even put one tile on one side of the road and one on the other side of the road. But either way, having like two very bad pallets in one short little tile area would be a really neat combination that I think would add to some really fun gameplay. I also think combining some lesser safe pallets with some decent windows could also lead to some fun play. There's actually a tile that exists like this already on Suffocation Pit, however the pallet on this part is a little bit weak, it could be a little bit stronger, but even this tile is extremely fun. You have a pretty strong window next to a pallet that isn't very strong, and you can combo the two to try to make some pretty interesting plays, but as a killer you're not really forced to kick the pallet, kicking the pallet could help you get hits, but if you want to be greedy you can try to squeeze out a hit without it, and then it leads to some really fun chases where there's a lot of different mind games you can do. Tiles like these are amazing because they're actually pretty strong for a survivor who knows what they're doing, but all it takes from the killer is one correct prediction and you can still get a hit. There's also some interesting tiles that used to exist in the past that ended up getting changed, which I'm actually really upset about. The old path pallets used to be designed in a way where basically, if you pre-threw the pallet, the killer would never catch up to you, but if you didn't pre-throw the pallet and you tried to loop it, the killer could actually punish you by respecting the pallet and then getting a hit. The reason why is because the short side of the path pallet that isn't as big used to be even shorter. The boxes that are there used to not exist and it used to only be a tree. And it used to be the perfect amount of distance so that a survivor vault would be the exact same amount of time as it took for the killer to go around the tree. So without bloodlust existing, you would never actually catch up if you tried to loop it. But if you respected the pallet and got that at a little bit of initial distance, then you would end up getting the hit. Basically what I'm saying is, is with the removal of bloodlust and a little bit of creativity in mind, you can make a lot of really interesting tiles that have a lot of really interesting gameplay as opposed to what we have right now, which is just the very basic run to a pallet, safe, didn't make it to the pallet, you get hit, rinse and repeat over and over again until the game is over. So with all these new tiles in mind and all these things that they can do to make the game a little bit more fair, I want to clarify a little bit what I meant about the more pallets and less safety situation. I want to make it clear that I'm not suggesting that every single pallet should be like this. I think that there definitely is room to leave some pallets that are really safe, but I think the, with the way the maps are right now, where like at least 90-95% to 95 of the pallets on every single map are like this, is definitely not okay. Ideally, instead of 8-12 to 12 pallets spawning on a map, you can possibly do way more, something like even 20+. plus. But then maybe make like three, four, or five of the pallets actually very safe, such as like Shack Pallet or like Maze Tiles Pallets, and then that way you can make the rest of the pallets that spawn around the map things that are more fair, or at least interestingly played pallets that aren't like the standard safe pallets that exist currently. I think overall this is the best thing they can do for the overall balance of the game. I do think that the overall size of maps might be a problem, and you may have to reduce the size of those, but it kind of seems like they're already working on that based on the current PTB and the current patch coming out soon. But this would definitely help close the gap between the low level survivors getting completely destroyed by every killer because they run out of resources so fast and the high skill survivors that completely destroy every killer because they actually know how to use the pallets and then the killers don't have a chance. This would also make survivor actually pretty difficult to play well in chase which I think is important because I think that's good to have. I think another issue this game has is that it's really, really, really easy to get to rank 1 regardless of how good or bad you are at the game if you just play very often, and I think this definitely might help the case towards actually adding a skill gap that'll keep people at rank 1 that are good, and the people that aren't good might derank a little bit and not actually play in high ranks. Although that's an entirely different issue that I can probably make a whole video on on its own. And that about sums up my thoughts on how to make the game balanced overall. I do realize that I did basically just summarize up Batam Preschool, except I do want to clarify that I think Batam Preschool was very close to being perfect map design, except they made the main buildings a little bit too strong and it's a little bit survivor sided because the buildings are just a little too strong and have a little bit too many resources. And I just wanted to clarify that real quick before I got uh, flooded in the comment section with just the fact that I'm describing Batam Preschool. Please do me a favor and leave your thoughts in the comments below. I want to know your thoughts on this, whether you agree, disagree, think I'm an idiot, think it's the best idea you ever heard. I don't care. I want to know your comments. Please leave them down below. Also, remember to give the video a like and subscribe to the channel if you guys enjoyed it because I will have even more content coming your way. And thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. I hope you guys have an awesome rest of your night. I'm out of here. See ya. Take care. See ya. I'm out of here. See ya. I'll see you later. See ya.